Vidyashankara temple, inside of that temple there is a Taralaya. In the Taralaya there is 12 pillars and the story is that uh, sunlight comes and shines on that each pillar where it is marked with a zodiac sign on that particular month. When the sun is in that month, it will shine on that particular day. This is the story called local story, a legend, Astala Purana. And to investigate that, that definitely conveys the idea that Shingeri Temple is a Kala Yantra of Samvatsa. That means whole year is indicated in that way. Now, that is unheard of and uh, raises a lot of eyebrows and uh, people tolerate that, people who are uh, worshippers in Shingeri, they go there and they listen to the story halfway and come back for a long time. This is a 13th, 14th century temple, so it's been there for a long time. So, uh, scientists got interested in this yearly calendar uh, type of stuff and they wanted to investigate the local legends called Salapodadas, how true or not true it is. And uh, there were two investigations that I know and that was the third investigation which was a thesis in uh, some Lyala College or something in uh, Tamil Nadu that is not available. But the two recent papers, one is by Dr. Shailaja, Taralaya of Bangalore, and then there is Dr. Kameshwar Rao and Dr. Pia Thakur uh, from Astrophysics Lab here as well as Tumkur uh, College. So these two research papers went there to Shingeri temple which is administered by the Archaeological Survey of India as well as owned by the temple. So they were able to uh, research it, come up with some conclusions and that paper is published and everybody can look at it, it's not a, a secret of any kind. But they won two scientific papers, arrive at two different conclusions. And, you know, you look at the methods, you look at um, different things that they do uh, and come up with the value and says, okay, the two scientists don't agree with each other. That's basically what you take away from it. And certainly the local legend is not proven and there are no written sources to prove that this does happen. It's a local legend and people just go along. So, why I got interested in that time is that that time frame in 2006-2007 the Indian universities uh, started a degree program for astrology. Not that I believe in astrology or anything like that, but uh, I was trying to study the foundation of astrology uh, from world over. Okay. So the tablets and this and that, what happened there and all that thing. And part of uh, my learning at my t the research at that point happens to be from a small town near Mysore city called Hedatale and there was a great gentleman there, Yogi. He explains the internal Kala Chakra. Um, and a lot of these things relate to internal Kala Chakra and all that thing. It doesn't elaborate that, but because it's published book. Um, so I got interested. First of all, I belong to Shingeri, Mutt. We follow Shingeri. I was born 20 miles away from Shingeri. So I knew that temple. And so, and I also know Shingeri is a Advaita center. 
monastic theories. They don't go by any astrology, although they do look at the Mahotka and all that. So, my initial thinking in 2006 when it was presented to me, because Harvard University and a few other universities had published these two papers, was why Shingeri uses this. Um, according to, you know, old Surya Siddhanta, it is wrong and all that stuff. And I was wondering why Shingeri uses it at all in the Advaita Center, and uh, here it is. So, uh, and my suspicion at that time was that it might be related to internal Kala Chakra, the way I learned it. And at present, the only true Kala Chakra followers are the Tibetan monks, led by Sri Dayan, Dalai Lama. And um, so I started investigating these two papers and uh, tried to understand, made a, uh, you know, a model, actual model that, that will rep replicate some of these things. And I wanted to verify that model at the Singeri temple. And it took a long time because of a lot of gaps and it's not easy. There is not an easy environment for an engineer from America to make systematic study here in the India. Um, you're not trusted, you're not, whatever, you know, that happens. So it took a lot of time, but then finally I was found ways with the help of people here, and I was able to go to Shingeri in December, and I found the sunlight, as I show in the front of the picture, here, on the day when it was said that we could not see sunlight at all. I was flabbergasted. So I started doing um, research on that aspect. Go there every month and take a picture. And you know, this, you know, I hired a local photographer too. Um, ASI gave, kindly gave the permission to go there and start doing it. Once you get the permission from them, following permissions were very easy and the Shingeri authorities also I was able to present it to them. So now we are on a roll and we are trying to do this thing. Still the question is why this is in a temple? Why Taralaya and Devalaya? And that question is not easily answered because we have plenty of temples in India like Anantapadanabha temple, like, um, you know, uh, Madhura temple, Madhera temple, Konar temple, Matanda temple, uh, which are all known for sunlight. And there are temples like Mahalakshmi temple uh, in Kolapur, which are known for specific times of the year they shine the sunlight. But there wasn't any temple anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world, which is a Kala Yantra like this. Although, there is a temple in uh, Israel. They do sunlight by the morning, I mean the daytime and evening time. In a circle, they, they have the zodiac clock things and uh, that's in Israel. Other than that, I have not seen anywhere. We have Stonehenge, we have this hand, we have that hand, but not a systematic thing like this. So the question, one is the astronomical investigation to find uh, sunlight on each and everything. Once you start calculating and all that, then you can understand forecast when the uh, next thing happens to be in that temple. You can measure it and all that. So we are able to uh, do a parallel path where we try to understand why this is so. Why do they have this? Problem? Now, that's a very interesting subject because nobody really does a systematic study of why temples have certain features. The only temple that I know that a, some work like that has been done is um, Vaikuntha Paramal Temple in Tamil Nadu. There was an American professor who went there and investigated and found the externals of the temple are um, depicting 
Bhagavata. And he has published books and very well known. But here, the question was, why do they have a sun, you know, shining on these pillars every month? What is the point? I mean, the other man being a calendar. Uh, even if it is a calendar, a calendrical uh, device of any kind, why do we have that in that temple? So the parallel path led me to the most important thing of my life and is that this is the temple culture, how to go back and understand why something is built in a temple is not generally known. So you are, you are sort of, sort of paving a new way. But I had some um, insights into how to go about that because a great yogi, Dr. Chamu, he has written a book called The Divine Dancer. And of course, um, Stella Krendish, she, she was the prof, you know, curator of uh, Philadelphia Museum. She was invited, I believe, from uh, by Ravindranath Tagore to become an investigation of this thing. She has published two volumes, which is commonly referred by most of the people about Indian temple architecture. So in uh, the Dr. Chamu's book, he says the temples are designed to attract people toward inner truths of yoga, or tapasya. And uh, it, it, the temples are designed in such a way as inner truth. So that gives you a connection of, hey, this uh, astrological phenomenon that we, astronomical phenomenon that we see is related to something of the inner truth in yoga. And the second most important point was from Dr. Stella Kremrish. She says that no part of the temple is redundant. <laughs> Every part of the temple relates to the main theme of that temple. Whatever the main theme the temple is portraying at that time. So with this one, and then you do sufficient research in Agama Shastra, which I had a background uh, of studying a little bit, not, not like an expert. I was able to uh, also simultaneously study the charitri, or history of Sri Devi, why this temple was ever built. And if you find a very, very interesting story, an actor that's published in the Shingeri website, Shingeri Net publishes that. Jagat Guru Vidya Tirtha at that time, the 10th Jagat Guru of Shingeri, um, he takes Mahasamadhi in Lambika Yoga at that temple site. And prior to entering to his um, Lambika Yoga Samadhi, he says he makes a very complex model. Uh, it's like a Vrindavan with four sides and uh, the sun, I mean the Shivalinga is about top of that stuff, Anapani Pita. And he tells his student, which is uh, Vidyaranya and his brother at that time, who was the Jagat Guru, that he will become or uh, attain a state what this image conveys or what this complex Sculpture comes. That com complex sculpture is in Singeri, the Vidya in Nepal, even today. Uh, it's called Chetur Murti Vidyeshwara Temple. So I started studying that. And then, lo and behold, in, uh, you know, uh, one of the studies is Sutta Samhita tells you um, why this, um, the sun, uh, light and our internal body coincide in exactly similar words. They use uh, full moon, a new moon, they have the eclipses, they use um, uh, like the um, equinoxes and solstices and this, that, everything else to describe the happenings in the inner of the Sukhma Sharira of uh, all of us, like you, me and everybody else. So there was a good connection I was able to in my, by training, I'm an engineer and uh, 
doing root cause analysis, I was able to connect all these things together and come up with a comprehensive story. And I was able to present it to the Jagat Guru Sanidana Vidhishekara Bharti, who spent significant amount of time with me. And, um, you know, um, wherever I had to add, I'll correct some of the things that my concept he did. And um, so that gave me some strength. And he actually visited on December and actually saw that, uh, you know, the sunshine on that particular thing. And he had very pointed questions. Okay, at that time I had uh, found the answer that, that what is the use of this? And so now I was open. <laughs> Why is it different? Like the, the things that you need to understand in a temple is not oriented towards true need. No temple that is for public is done that. It's only for sannyasis it faces true East. There is some theory and all that stuff. And started decoding all that thing and then finally it came up to a whole story which now goes back and then one of the final areas is why the, what is the, the systematic way this is illustrating or illuminating every pillar and we find that it's in the regular order and the reverse order and the, and if you find Shingeri, you know, all of a sudden you will remember in one of the books it says regular order, okay, and then, then you can be able to connect that thing to that thing. And second thing is, um, in 1952, Government of India appointment, appointed Calendar Reforms Committee, Saha Commission it's called. And they go through all the calendar systems and the uh, ancient Ayurvedic calendar system, which he claims is the most scientific calendar, nobody follows. In here, the Mesha, Mesha meaning the uh, Ajal, whatever we call it in the Indian story, is 30 degrees before the equinox point. That is a point that, and exactly you find that in Shingeri. So you were able to follow that thing that he came up with, and uh, that is the Ajurvedic. There you can then find uh, traces of. Um, this Madhu, Madhava, and all Shukra, and all that wonderful stories, then you will, you'll be surprised to find that the first step of the Saptapadi in a marriage uses Urja, Isha, and all that thing is what you see here in Shingeri. And um, I was also able to convince the Jagat Guru, and he opened up other temples in the, the small temples within the complex, and within this this, this uh, Vidya Shankara complex, and I was able to also decode Shiva Purana, and how exactly these things work. And interestingly, none of them really tell you why, uh, although hundred parts of information, why exactly how this is there. And Dr. Stella Trendish, she says the tenth century onwards. The motif of the inner Garbhagudi is replicated in the Navaranga. And, and here now all of a sudden I got the, the gold mine. I was able to connect the Chaturmurti Vidyeshwara message from Shiva Purana, which is, explains the Srishti aspect of Avyakta becoming Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, of the three Gunas, later on become the world. And also front of that um, um, complex figure with Chaturmurti Videshwara is where the Jagat Guru is sitting in uh, um, meditative form and then he is there. So this is the elaboration of that particular front and it shows how to escape from this world through meditation, Lambika Yoga is in that's in that he was a follower of and reach the Avyakta. So, this is the complete yogic form that you start the world starts from Avyakta Paramatma, whether it's a Shiva or Vishnu or Devi, whatever. Uh, you know, we have we have Avyakta form, Saligrama, for example, Shivalinga, for example. From there, the world comes, and the world now from here you can escape. So, it's the most important yogic philosophy that Portrait Stenker is portraying 
and uh, now you are able to connect with the uh, Sutta Samhita how exactly this works. There is an internal um, Kala Chakra that coincides with the external Kala Chakra and with 1952 Sahatma Mission's report you can say that is Vedanga Jyotisha. Okay? And uh, that starts in a, amazingly, Vedanga Jyotisha coincides with the, not with the current practices that we do, but with the Vedanga Jyotisha as pronounced by the Travartaka Rishis, or uh, the pioneer Rishis who started the, the foundation of the Indian astronomy, and that is 18 Rishis. And uh, they started. So, Actually, the first month of the year is the spring. Now, in the second phase of the research, I was able to connect all that Kalidasa, Ritu Samhara, uh, all the ragas and musics and everything else. And uh, I mean, um, it, the Ayurveda's Ritu Charya and the, how they go through changing their um, treatment you know, depending on the season. Then you can trace the flora and fauna and how it comes um, and then how it relates to human body. Now, one of the things in the authentic book that I was able to find, Kala Madha, um, they say that how do you recognize uh, spring? It is when the Ashoka Pushpa gives flowers. Ashoka Pushpa at that time, if you follow that, Puri Jagannatha temple has Ashoka Pushpa Abhisheka to Jagannatha at that time. Mm -hmm. So one day you connect, 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 connect. So this moral of the story for me at that point is none of these things are, we are able to understand by it itself in any scientific terms unless we go back to the Rishi culture and trace it. Now the Rishi culture says the very first statement is uh, this is in uh, Maitreyi Upanishad, Maitreyi Upanishad. They say that sun, the, the face of the sun and the face of the internal sun, which is the prana in us, and the external sun is sun that we know, are one and the same. And the second statement that comes out is that the face of the sun and face of the satras are the uh, calendar homas that they used to do were all one and the same. So now it is connected to the satras and all that and I was able to in the second uh, phase of this research which is going to be published soon that was able to trace Gavam Ayana that is Gavam Ayana. Gavam, Gavam means Go means sunlight and one of the words. Go also means uh, like a um, cow mm -hmm. but like when you say in the temple environment, Go means, Go Pura means, it's not a cow shed, it is the shed of the light. So in there they had this tropical calendar system that the modern science mimics, mimics into the current calendar situation 5000 years ago. So the research is there. So when we go there, there is the gold mine. Mm -hmm. So we use something and go back and trace. Now, with this thing, we are able to trace this, the phenomena of sun lighting an a, a object of worship many places in India on certain times of the year. If you observe all these things are tropical in nature and we wonder why because they didn't know, they knew tropical because it is the uh, Sampatika Sauryama, uh, Sauramana and it is tropical. So one to another connection, we have a complete story that is told in this temple in Shingeri and there is no other temple anywhere in the world which can detail like this with a background from the scriptures that can be detailed. It can be verified by any number of people now based on the research here and this could be used as a model to research other temples in, the, in, in India. So it relates to, and, and also the effect of some of these things, the calendars and all that thing, uh, our festivals, our this, our that, relate to sun movement within the body. And there is a, 
one last thing I want to mention in the, if you go to Pravartaka Rishis, there actually is nine different types of measurements. It's called manas. Nakshatramana, Sauramana, Chandramana, Savanamana, and then <coughs> Brasbatyamana are used for Lauki Kafirs, the local of the the rest of the stuff before are used for uh, measuring time from start of the universe, or Kalpa to Kalpa. So here, the nine are, each one of them are specified for a different use. Unless you take one and say, discuss that, one is cited all this, that, everything else, confusion that you see, unless you understand why it is used, uh, discussion on these things in public forums and all that stuff doesn't make any meaning in a con consistent with this. So Shingeri becomes a wonderful model and I'm sure there are plenty of temples in India and around the world. I've collected uh, some of the sun temples in uh, America uh, which can be explained by the seasonal thing and how it affects your body. Thank you.